Morning Asp, this is John with Active Self Protection. I got a great question, so I thought I would do a video on it. And the question is uh, that was asked to me is, John, how do I pick a good handgun? What are good brands and what are not good brands? What's quality and what's crap? You know, I wish there was a, a two-second answer, but the reality is there are tiers like anything else. So what I have here on the board is I have handguns, rifles, and shotguns. And what's good and what's not good? What is... Uh, acceptable, what's entry level, what's higher end. Now if you look, I kind of have them arranged entry level, mid level, high level, and custom. Now if I change that and instead of um, looking at this as guns, what if we looked at this as cars? What are my entry level cars? Now you know, a lot of my uh, Korean imports, Daewoo and uh, Kia and Hyundai, kind of entry level and they kind of creep down this way. You know, what are my mid level? That's like my big three, right? Ford, Chevy, Dodge. You know, mid-level cars. What are my high-end cars? That's my BMWs and my Mercedes-Benz. Then well, what's my custom luxury vehicles? Now we're talking high dollar. Now we're talking AMG. We're talking Maybach. We're talking all of the Italian automakers, Lamborghini and Ferrari, those kind of things. And you, now you might look and say, well, but John, well, wait a minute. I can get a Lingenfelter Corvette C7. That is an incredibly expensive vehicle. Well, sure you can, but that's not what they're known for. You know, you can, I can get a you know, a King Ranch Ford pickup truck that cost me a ton of money. Yeah, you're right. But again, that's not what the brand is known for. This is generally what they do. And, and you can get excellent examples at all price points. So what does that look like in a handgun? Uh, you can see some of these here. If I back up a second. So if I move from the entry level, uh, from a Daewoo up to a Ford, I get a lot of change for the dollar, right? Or I move up into a nice Chevy. Now I move from here to here, I gotta pay a lot of money to go from a Ford or a Chrysler up to a Mercedes Benz. I gotta pay even more money to move up from a Mercedes Benz to a Maybach. Okay, so not a lot of people can afford these, but if you can, hey great, you got money to burn, go for it. So you get a lot more bang for the buck moving from the entry level to the mid level, and then you start paying premium prices when you get to the high level and the custom level. Okay, the only one of these that I wouldn't recommend is High Point. I, I think the High Point's a throwaway gun. It doesn't do what I don't think uh, a lot of people want it to do, which is to be reliable, which is to be functional. Now, again, if you're just looking to put a gun in the safe, buy any of them. Buy what you can afford. Do what you want to do. If you're looking for a range toy, buy any of them. But if you're looking for something as a defensive tool, you might want to consider. So, again, High Point's not a great gun. Bursa and Taurus, some people like them, some people don't. I own both, and the ones that I own are great. They run well. Other people have uh, much more problems with them. So these ones, because of quality control, it's spotty. So you got to kind of make sure that the one that you get works and test them thoroughly. Now, kind of the end of the entry level and into the mid level, Carr and Smith & Wesson both make a series that's supposed to be entry level. You just don't get all of the features on the CM series and Carr and the Sigma series and Smith that you'll get on the mid-level guns. What are my mid-level guns? Well, now you get a, a different series of car or a Smith & Wesson M&P. That's a great gun. Glock makes good mid-value level guns. Springfield on their XD line, mid-level gun. Ruger makes great guns, and they are you know, starting to edge just a little bit. Then I get into the higher end. Now I'm starting to spend a little more money on a Sig Sauer. Ooh, it's pretty, and it's German. Uh, Heckler and Couch, H and K. Again, nice guns. Some people love them. Kimber, you know. You, now again, you can buy an $800 Kimber that's kind of towards this side, or you can buy a $2,000 Kimber. Then you might get into the, you know, the custom luxury guns. You know, a Wilson Combat 1911 will run you five grand. Uh, an Ed Brown Custom 1911 will run you four to six thousand dollars. So if you want to spend that kind of money, great. You come up here, a Sig Sauer pistol might cost you a thousand dollars. Heckler and Coach might cost you a thousand dollars. The Kimber that I used to carry was a $1,300 gun. Okay, now you come up here, the mid-value guns, and you know a, a Glock new will cost you 500 bucks. All right, so you see how you move up. Now some of these down here, you can get a Taurus uh, for maybe 300. You can get a CM Car or a Sigma Smith and Wesson about the same, 300 bucks. And you're getting up in here, 200 dollars and even more. I think making the jump here makes a lot of sense for any of these brands and any of these guns that work well for you. I shoot a Glock because it works for me. Might not work for you though, so don't let me convince you to buy one because it works for me. Any of those work good. Now let's come over to rifles. <clears throat> I'm focusing here just on the AR-15 pattern rifle. Why? Because it's the one everybody wants right now. Sure, you're like, oh, but John, I want an AR-10, or I want a Mini-14, or I want something like that. Okay, different video. This is basics, okay? Same thing. Entry-level guns, DPMS, Bushmaster, Olympic Arms, Wyndham Arms, Stag Arms starts to get towards the middle of the pack. Entry-level guns, how much can you get a DPMS for? Well, 
we're still in the craziness after uh, you know the the Newtown shootings and the president still screaming about uh, banning assault rifles, uh, even though none of these really are. So modern sporting rifles. I own a DPMS, and my defensive rifle started as a DPMS. I own a Stag as well. They're good guns. Uh, you get into the middle tier. Smith and Wesson makes a pretty good gun. Their M and P line again. Colt makes a great gun. You spend a little more money and you'll get a better gun. You'll get a little better fit and finish, a little better parts. You start moving into kind of the semi-custom or the high-end Daniel Defense. Now here, you know, this might be an $800 gun. This might be a $1,000, $1,100 gun. You know, Daniel Defense can run you $1,600, $1,700. A Les Bayer is going to run you about $2,000. You get all the way down to John Noveski. Um, you know, rest in peace, John. But, you know, you get down to Noveski and you're spending a lot of money. Or JP, those guys kind of. So you can spend a ton of money, again, on a custom gun. Same thing if we move over here and we talk about shotguns. What are some of the good shotguns that are out there? Well, you know, Remington, the Hawk guns. Hawks are super cheap. Sega, you can get really cheap guns. Winchester, Mossberg, these are entry-level guns. You, you can get a Remington 870 for about 350 bucks. Okay, you move up to their 1100 series, which is a semi-auto gun. Now you're caught talking down here. My mid tiers like Benelli, Weatherby, uh, Beretta, again, higher quality gun, a gun that's known to run a little bit smoother. You can get down here and you can buy a Wilson Combat or you can buy really custom high-end shotguns too. So it depends on the kind of money that you want to spend. If you're like, well, John, I'm just looking to get into this market. I'm just trying to learn how to do that. Well, then stay kind of middle of the road here. I wouldn't recommend a Hawk shotgun, but I run Remingtons, and they run great for me. I have friends who love uh, Mossberg or Winchester. Those will run fine. Gosh, John, I really want to buy a rifle for home defense. Well, you can get away with a Bushmaster or an Olympic Arms or a DPMS, and they'll be just fine for you. But you've got to do a little more work to make sure they run correctly and appropriately. Doing that, I, again, my defensive rifle started life as a DPMS, and then I put parts in it as I had time and ability, started cheap and then moved it in. For a handgun, I am going to recommend, again, if you got to start here, start here. If you don't have any more money, then fine. If you can, start in this value tier. Okay, start in one of those guys. Get an XD or a Smith & Wesson M&P or a Glock, you know, uh, a Ruger, you know, mid-tier if you're a 1911 fan. I don't recommend a 1911 for a brand new shooter. It's lots of parts and pieces and, you know, you got to know what you're doing a little bit. But if you were, get a Springfield GI, uh, something along those lines. A little bit more money, but you get a lot more quality. Uh, and, and again, within these brands, there's always models that are higher end and lower end. You get what you pay for. Uh, start in the mid-tier mid if you can. If not, make sure that the one that you get out of the entry tier meets your needs and will run like you want it to. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day.